All right, let's dive into the demonstration for how we're gonna send some Linux logs off to our main Splunk server instance. Here we are in our Amazon EC2 instance and displaying this as a picture. We have our main Splunk server functioning as our search head, um, license master, indexer, and monitoring console. And below we have the UF, other EC2 instance running as a Linux machine with that associated .65 IP. And our URL for our main Splunk instance, I've already uh, fired it up and logged into it on Splunk web for port 8000. And now we just need to figure out how to set up and deploy forwarding from our Linux universal forwarder on this other remote machine with the public IP address of the .65 over to our Splunk main server instance. All right, so that is the goal. Um, let's go ahead and connect to our uh, instances as well via SSH. So I've already gone ahead and done that. This will be the main Splunk server, and the other terminal here will be the Linux machine that we're going to install the Universal Forwarder on. So just kind of rename the titles there to keep them straight, Linux UF versus main Splunk server. All right. Now, first thing we need to do to send these logs over to our main Splunk server instance is to enable receiving on our main Splunk server. So going to Splunk Web, we can go to Settings, Forwarding and Receiving, and then under Receiving Data, Configure Receiving, Add New. The default receiving port for Splunk is 9997, so you tell it to listen on this port and click Save. Oh, but since I've already configured this, that only needs to be done once, and this is what would show up as configured, enabled, to receive, and listen for data incoming on this port 9997. So that's all that needs to be done on your receiving Splunk side. You can also accomplish this same thing by running the command on the CLI. The command would be Splunk, enable listen, and then 9997. We did the same exact thing just through Splunk Web, but that's the CLI way to do it as well. Over to our Linux UF on the CLI, we need to get the universal forwarder over to it and send data to our receiver. So log into your Splunk account and head over to Splunk's free download section for their universal forwarders and select the correct package you would like to work with. I'm going to select the 64-bit TGZ extension, and it will download to your local instance, but I'm going to use the command line wget because I don't want to have to transfer files to my EC2 instance. I'm just going to do it through our SSH connection on the terminal and run the, the wget command from there. So I'll go ahead and copy this, and I'm on the terminal now for our Linux machine. First thing we're going to do, make a directory, opt Splunk Forwarder. This is where we're going to host the Universal Forwarder package. And the next command, I'm going to take ownership of my current user because we're using uh, AWS. You can't add users. So I'll work with the EC2 user and I'll take ownership of that directory path. And then I'll just navigate to it. nothing in it currently. Confirm that you're in the current directory that you want to download the TGZ Universal Forwarder installer package into, and we are. Paste in that wget command, hit enter, and the Universal Forwarder will download and install to that instance. If we take a look at what's here, we now have that Universal Forwarder installer package. We'll clean this up a bit, and now we're going to on tar, we're going to use tar, tag X, Z, V, capital C, put it in the opt directory, tag F, and then the name of the package that we want to untar, which we'll use tab complete here for our Splunk forwarder pack package. 
You click enter and it's going to untar. We do an ls. Now we have the correct working directory of Splunk forwarder and then bin. If you don't use the correct tar directory, this is where sometimes you end up with Splunk forwarder, Splunk forwarder, or weird path navigation. So be sure to use the right tar command there. Next, we can go into bin and start running our Splunk commands. So we're going to add our forwarding server IP address and receiving port information. We're going to grab our public IP from our main Splunk server instance, the dot 200 here, copy that and paste it here. And we've already configured receiving on port 9997. So we go ahead and press enter, no such file directory. Uh, uh, where am I? I'm in bin. Oh, I'm in bin of the instance. Okay, so that's the bin of the uh, EC2 Linux instance. I want to be in Splunk uh, forwarder bin. So I'm going to move there. Don't know why it dropped me into bin of the, the main instance. Uh, make sure I'm there. CD bin. Dang, I think that dropped me into the local bin again. Okay, I'll type out the full path. Op, Splunk forwarder bin, do a PWD. Okay, now I'm in bin with our Splunk command that you see there. And we will go ahead and rerun this command. Add forward server, public IP, port we're listening on, press enter. Yes, I agree to work with the universal forwarder Splunk license. We'll set up our administrator credentials here. So username and password. I'll put Haley. I'll make my password. I'll confirm it. And we have successfully added forwarding to our main Splunk server instance on port 9997. I'll go ahead and do um, a sudo Splunk enable boot start for our UF to fire up upon reboot. Oh, got to put the dot slash in there to run. And now our UF is configured to run at boot start. Now we can run the next command. We're going to start up Splunk. And now our UF is started. Got the status, uh, status of the green OK. So our UF is up and running. Now we also want to collect some data to forward off. So we're going to monitor the var log directory. So Splunk add monitor slash var slash log. Put in our credentials. And we have successfully added the monitor input of var log. So those are the logs that I would expect to go over to our instance. We can now list out our forwarding server just to confirm. And we see our public IP address there. And if we go to our main Splunk instance, we can check our display listening port and permission denied. We're on a sudo. Splunk display listen, put my credentials in, and we should see that we are configured to receive and it's enabled on port 9997. Okay. Now let's take a look at one of our uh, comp files that's relevant here. So our inputs is kind of going to have our, our var log monitor for that directory, but our outputs file should have our Splunk main server index configured to be routing over there. So if we go to uh, Etsy system local and take a look at our outputs.conf, that is exactly what we see here. TCP out for our server at that IP on that port. Everything is configured correctly in our outputs.conf. Let's go ahead and verify this on our Splunk instance. So head over to the main Splunk server, Splunk web interface, and we can just confirm this with the internal log sources. We should have our main Splunk server, which we do, 
and our EC2 instance for our Linux UF. We can click on that host and verify the source that is coming in is from our var log and any subdirectories from that, which it looks like it is. So we have successfully set up a universal forwarder on a remote Linux machine and then forwarded off all of our var log monitoring file to our main Splunk server instance.